Hello. Welcome to Raymond Castile's Basement of Horror. Today we're going to look at the new Mego Curse of Frankenstein figure. Oh, I want to say I'm recovering from a cold. So I've had a, a cold for the last couple of weeks. And so I'm sure you can kind of hear it in my voice. Maybe my nose is a little red or, <clears throat> or swollen so that's what's going on i i am recovering from a cold but even in my diminished capacity i'm still trudging forward to give you a new episode so this is the guy we're going to talk about this little critter here that's the new miko christopher lee Curse of Frankenstein figure. Well, there, you, you just saw him. Show's over. That was a quick episode. Well, no, we'll, we'll go on a little more than that, but hopefully this will be a, a little, almost like a, a mini episode, I hope. I, I don't think I can talk for an hour about this one figure, but I might. I don't know. We'll see. So... We've already seen the Mego uh, Christopher Lee Dracula and the Peter Cushing Van Helsing and the Reptile. I think that's all the Mego Hammer figures we've seen so far. I think that's all the ones they've actually released. They had a deal with Topps, the former baseball card company. They had a deal to release some limited edition figures online only. They were available for only one week, and you had to get in there and, and, and order them before the time expired. And they tried that for a few months, and it didn't work out, and now that's over. But during that period, they offered, in the month of October, they offered four Hammer characters the Christopher Lee Mummy, the Herbert Lom Phantom of the Opera, the Zombie from Plague of the Zombies, and the Gorgon. And unfortunately, they canceled the Gorgon for what they said were rights issues. Uh, you know, who knows what that was about. But the other three are supposed to be still uh, in the process of being produced. And I did order all four, so uh, the Gorgon's canceled, but hopefully I'll get the other three. And there's a lot of discussion online about the merits or lack uh, thereof of this whole tops situation, and, and I'm not going to get into that. I wasn't crazy about the whole thing, and uh, I, I wonder, I do think I'm going to see the figures. I do think the, they're, they're going to produce those figures and that I'll see the, the three hammer ones that I paid for. Uh, I paid for the Gorgon, but they refunded my money on that. Uh, I do think we'll see them. When, who knows? And I, I'm, I'm wondering what kind of packaging will they be in? Will they be... Uh, compatible with the rest of the hammer figures? Will they look the same? Uh, you know, will it be in cards instead of boxes? That kind of thing. And then will we see the same figures in a slightly altered form wind up on store shelves? Uh, because these were priced at a premium, particularly the shipping was very expensive, so it cost a lot more money to buy these things through this top steel than it would to buy uh, a figure like this at uh, Walmart. <clears throat> so so it, it, it would burn a little bit to have paid up for the Topps exclusive figures only to see them at Walmart for fifteen dollars, so you know there's a lot of reasons why that 
that whole deal was less than ideal. And it's not something I'm interested in talking about in any other, in any more detail than that, but just to say that <clears throat> they've released, as of this recording, three, well, uh, four. They've released four, counting this one, four Hammer figures, Dracula, Van Helsing, Reptile, Frankenstein's Creature. They've teased a Baron Frankenstein head sculpt, a Peter Cushing Baron Frankenstein. And uh, they've got those three from the Tops deal. And I'm not sure if there are any other Hammer figures. Oh, the lady, or the woman in black. I don't know, is it the lady in black or the woman in black? Whichever one it is. But the, the recent version, the Daniel Radcliffe film, that, that was a Hammer film. So they announced her and I think she's coming out in early 2022. So that's, you know, if all those get out, all the ones that they've announced or teased actually come out, uh, really the curse of the werewolf is the only other character that I feel is vital, the only essential hammer character that they won't have produced. So if they get all those other ones out, plus the werewolf, the curse of the werewolf, the Oliver Reed werewolf, then I think that's all total a pretty good hammer collection, a uh, pretty good uh, series of hammer figures. I mean, they could put out you know, the Yeti or the uh, evil of Frankenstein or you know various other characters, but if they just get, do everything they've announced, and that Baron Frankenstein that, that they teased with the head sculpt, and then add the werewolf, I think that's a very respectable, uh, and I think a complete set of the essential Hammer characters. Um, you know, all, all the superstars are there. So I'm, I'm hopeful that we see that werewolf, they haven't announced it. Apparently there's some issue with the rights or something, I don't know. But they're working on it, I think. And hopefully we'll see the werewolf and everything else will get released. And then we'll have a nice collection of licensed Miko hammer figures. And then anything beyond that is just gravy. That's just icing on top if they if they continue to put out additional characters like a, a golden vampire or a quater mass, et cetera, et cetera. So, oh, and are you watching this on Christmas Day? I don't know. I don't know when I'm going to upload this. It's very close to Christmas, and I've, I've already put out my Christmas episode. So this isn't a Christmas episode. If I can make it a Christmas episode, let's make it a Christmas episode. Let's go. Here we are. We got the snow. We got the sleigh bells. Yeah, it's holiday magic. Christmas time. All right. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Yes, sir. Okay. So just add that in there just in case you're watching this on Christmas Day, if I get this thing finished and uploaded it, if in time for Christmas Day, then this is my Christmas gift, to, Christmas gift to you, a new episode of Basement of Horror. What more can you ask for on Christmas Day? Okay, I think the snow is letting up, it's slowing down, and it's done. No more snow. I have control over the elements. Okay. See, I told you I could get an hour out of just this one figure. To further delay... Oh! <clears throat> this is cool. So this just came in. I'm not going to say the name of this figure. <laughs> Let's call him the Richard Demon. So... 
just shorten that Richard into a nickname. The Richard Demon. What has he got in his hand there? Uh, I think he's got Richard in his hand. So this is the Bigfoot from Night of the Demon, the 80s exploitation film, Night of the Demon. And that film was recently released for the first time in a restored, remastered, definitive edition. And this was a piece of merch that was offered for sale in conjunction with the Blu-ray. I think it's a 4K. I have it, but I haven't watched it yet. A 4K Blu-ray set. So there was a lot of merch you could buy with it. And uh, this is one of the pieces you could buy, and I elected to buy that. It's an official licensed figurine of the Bigfoot from Night of the Demon. And if you've never seen Night of the Demon, it's a very... Oh my gosh, look at this dust. Yikes. <clears throat> wow, look at all that. I didn't realize there was all this dust on the bottom of it. Now it's made a mess. <clears throat> we can't have that. So, <clears throat> Night of the Demon is a very, very violent, nightmarish Bigfoot movie, you know, an exploitation Bigfoot movie from the 80s, and it was on the UK video nasties list of banned films in England and in the 80s in the United Kingdom. <clears throat> it's a very, very dark, uh, bleak movie. And I saw it, it was only available on VHS um, for a long time. And I think, I think all the DVDs, I want to say they were all bootleg, but I think there was one that was kind of like mm, semi-authorized. I'm not sure. I've only seen bootlegs. <clears throat> and I think the bootlegs were all made off the VHS so now it's been beautifully restored and it's got licensed merchandise now. So that, that's a cool little thing. Oh, to further delay, let's push this back a little more, stretch this out a little more. Let's take a look at this. So we saw the Van Helsing on a previous episode. And now this though, this is different. This has the candlestick holders. The previous version had a stiletto stake included. And this one has candlestick holders. Why? Because there's an iconic moment at the end of Horror of Dracula where Van Helsing grabs two candlestick holders and makes a crucifix with them and uses that to hold down Dracula while he burns in the sun. The sunlight destroys Dracula. And as we pointed out in the previous episode where we were talking about this, you would think that that iconic image would be on the back of the card, but no. It's a completely different movie and a different character that's a descendant of Van Helsing, not, not the same Van Helsing that the toy depicts. But here is that iconic image. There you go, you should be seeing it now. That's the iconic moment in the film when Van Helsing uses the candlestick holders to defeat Dracula. Big moment at the end of the movie. And so now Amigo has rectified the issue with the previous version of this, which had this weird little I mean, if, if it were in scale with me, it would be like that big. It was like a little spike that he would hold. It was just, you know, like a nail, like a big nail that he might uh, use in the railroad construction or something. I don't know. But it was like a stiletto, not a stake. And so Migo had a lot of complaints about that. And uh, they fixed it. 
added a proper uh, accessory that made sense that you, that you saw in the movie. And uh, I, so I think this is now the definitive version of this toy with the proper accessories added. So it's good that they fixed that. <clears throat> okay, so here is this Christopher Lee Frankenstein's creature. And Christopher Lee always called it the creature. He never said Frankenstein's monster. And I think that is the official name of the character. It's the creature. It's not the creature from the Black Lagoon. It's the creature. The creature from Curse of Frankenstein, which was released in 1957. And I think today Warner Brothers owns the U.S. rights to Curse of Frankenstein. And I, I bring that up because I noticed that ni neither of these have a Warner Brothers copyright on it. But it's interesting what, what copyright is there. We'll, we'll mention that later. So let's look at this figure again. I think it's really great. Now I apologize if uh, there's a bunch of reflections because you know how it is with these toys that that uh, are dressed in black. We, we get all these reflections in the bubble or the window. Okay so here so people have people have um, criticized the sculpt when I say people, uh, you know, very few people actually. It's gotten praise, I think, more than anything else. But it's gotten some criticism. So I think it is perfectly fine. Is it the greatest? Is it, is it, is it the end all of Christopher Lee Frankenstein sculpts? No. Is this how Hot Toys would do it? No. Is it how NECA would do it? No, I think NECA would sculpted a little differently. But considering that it is a Mego, a Mego Curse of Frankenstein, I think this sculpt is perfectly fine. It, it's, Mego has a certain aesthetic that's simplified and soft looking. It's not going to be 100% movie accurate, and it shouldn't be. It's, it's a it's not a Hot Toys, it's, it's not Mezco, it's not NECA, it's Mego. Mego has a certain, a certain aesthetic. And so I think in keeping that in mind, it looks like a Mego Curse of Frankenstein should look. And you notice he's got his hands clutching his sides. I don't know if he has heartburn. Maybe he's moving uh, a kidney stone. I actually saw my urologist today and had a KUB to see how my kidney stones are doing. And having gone through that, I can tell you that you don't clutch your stomach. You clutch your back, if anything. So I don't know, maybe he's had a, a nice meal. He's got a full belly, he's saying, ah, that was a good meal. Unfortunately, in Curse of Frankenstein, there isn't an equivalent to the hermit in Bride of Frankenstein in the universal universe. The hammer Frankenstein creature never meets a friend like that. That, that takes him in and is nice to him. You can see here, ah, there we go. He's got just normal shoes or, or boots if you want to, but they're not like, I guess you have to say they're boots, they're not slippers, but they're not uh, universal style Frankenstein boots and they shouldn't be, that's not what the character wears. Now, I've also heard some critiques that the jacket doesn't button up high enough, 
or the color's not quite right, again, I think it's fine for a Mego, considering it is a Mego figure. Mego has a toyetic look. It doesn't look 100% screen accurate. It has a s softer, simplified look, and so that's fine. It's, it's a okay. Um, <clears throat> well, now let's look at this plastic. You see, he's got a plastic wrap around his middle, and people have wondered what that's about. See the plastic there? The clear, clear plastic wrapped around his middle. A lot of toys with rooted hair have plastic around their heads. When, you know, when in the package, obviously, to keep that hair from going crazy. But this is a, a toy with the plastic around the waist. And I, I, I suspect it's because they wanted the, the hands clutching the chest like that or the stomach area. They liked that pose. They thought it looked cool. But uh, I, bet, I bet the black dye in that jacket would stain the hands by the time they reached store shelves and people opened it up i bet they'd find that the palms were stained purple from the black dye because migo has a problem with the dye in their clothing especially the black dye and a lot of their particularly monster characters have black outfits the black dye stains things purple it stains the plastic purple. Uh, or if there's like a, like in the case of a Dracula or something like that, it has like white and black and costume pieces touching each other. The black costume pieces can stain the white costume pieces. And this is a problem that was there from day one with the Bela Lugosi Dracula in the first Target wave. And the Kiss Target figures had this issue. And a lot of, a lot of, a lot of them have the issue, but it's, it's been there from day one. Uh, I don't, I don't if, if, if that's the case, I don't know why in the world Migo hasn't fixed that. That's, that's just not acceptable to have toys with the clothing the dye and the clothing bleeding off and staining the plastic of the toy. That's, and it's, you know, it's not a recent problem. It's not anything due to COVID. It was there from day one, from the first wave at Target. So they've had all kinds of time to fix it. And if, if indeed that's what's going on there, then that's ridiculous. That, that needs to be fixed. Well, it's already, it's, it's late. It's late to be fixing it now. It needs to have been fixed, but I guess better late than never. Now, now, another another reason that plastic could be there is because the the buttons on the jacket I think are probably glued on instead of stitched. Other characters, like I think uh, Van Helsing's buttons are glued on, and many other characters have had glued on buttons, so they might have been concerned about the hands and knocking the buttons off. Uh, you know, I don't think it's great to have glued on buttons, but it, it's not a deal breaker. And, and I, don't, I don't know for sure that they are glued on. I'm just kind of guessing because other figures had that. Yeah, those are glued on. So, uh, you know, that could be another reason they, did, they put the plastic there. I don't mind the plastic. It's just, it is a little curious and people have wondered why is there plastic wrapped around him and I think it's one or both of the reasons I just stated um, so let's well before we go to the back let's talk a little more about the front now the I'm not crazy at all about the artwork I do like that they're going with a Lincoln-esque style with the hammer series and they have an environment 
that the monster might live in. And it doesn't have to be uh, perfect. Uh, like, like the reptile had a tropical jungle environment, and there's nothing like that in the movie. But th that's okay. You can imagine that character living in an environment like that. In this case, though, I, have, I do have a problem with this, because this is obviously a universal-style Bride of Frankenstein-inspired lab. It's very specifically Bride of Frankenstein. And there's nothing Hammer about it. And that bothers me because Hammer was deliberately positioning itself away from the universal style and trying to do something different. And that's one of the reasons why Curse of Frankenstein was an important film, because it was uh, such a departure from what had gone before. And it really changed the tropes in, in horror from that black and white gothic style of the Universal films to something much more modern, bright colors, violence, sexuality. It was a very different attitude and it, it opened up a new world for the horror genre. In particular, that film, Curse of Frankenstein, was very, very important and, and influential. So, I, so for that reason, it bothers me to see a universal-style lab in the artwork, because that goes against the whole nature of what the film was trying to do. What I would rather see would be uh, the very colorful cluttered lab that was in the movie, something that l looks similar to that with all those candy colors and lots of equipment all bunched together and the water tank because the monster was floating in a, li in a tank of liquid. Uh, but uh, that would have required hiring an illustrator to create that instead of using stock art. And I'm sure there's no stock art anywhere that Re resembles the lab in the in Curse of Frankenstein. It's a very unique looking, has a very specific look. But uh, I mean, that's their problem, not mine. <laughs> I say, as a consumer looking at it, I want to see a Hammer style lab, and I, so it bothers me that it's not, and also that it has, <coughs> um, it's black and white. Everything about what you're seeing here has a black and white look. Even though the toy isn't black and white, it's got red blood in the scars, it's got yellow teeth, it's not black and white, but it has that look. It, it has a black and white look. And the artwork is certainly black and white. So, considering this, is, this was a color film, and the color was such an important part of it, and so central to its identity, it's, uh, my cat's looking at me over there. Billy, how you doing down there? Poor baby. Uh, I think he's got, the doctor thinks he has allergies. Well, <clears throat> so the black and white look, you know, I don't, I don't like that since it's a, you know, it's, it's a color film. But now let's turn it around. So th that is the correct character from the correct film. You know, that's the Curse of Frankenstein. That's Christopher Lee's monster from Curse of Frankenstein. But again, you see, it's black and white. It's a black and white image. It's got that full moon, very universal looking. It seems like it's trying to um, conjure a certain feeling of like th those old movies, like something you would have watched on a black and white TV. Uh, I guess that's a aesthetic choice, but I would have rather seen a color image with a 
bright colors and a bright background, not, not this very universal looking full moon background. Um, and I don't know if this still, this movie still is black and white, it might be. But, you know, they can colorize it. I'm sure there's color images that could be available. So, so the whole, there's this black and white thing about the, the back, the artwork, and even the toy itself. There's this kind of black and white aesthetic going on, which is kind of strange since it's a color film and everything about it is very colorful. <clears throat> so let's, so I wanted to mention the copyright. This is 2021 copyright Hammer Films Legacy Limited, all rights reserved. And the Van Helsing also says Hammer Films Legacy Limited. I'm curious to do a little research on Hammer Films Legacy Limited and see what, what is that. I guess, I don't know, is it a limited partnership? I don't know. But, so it doesn't say Warner Brothers, which previously I would have expected any U.S. Curse of Frankenstein product to have a Warner Brothers copyright. And this instead has this Hammer Films Legacy Limited. So I'm wondering if that is, because the rights to Hammer was so complicated for so long, I'm wondering if that's like a clue to how <clears throat> how they finally got it all together and put together some kind of a deal to be able to license all these characters that in the U.S. have been controlled by these different studios, Warner Brothers, Universal, Paramount, whatever. There's a bunch of different companies involved. So I wonder if that entity with the copyright on it, I, I just wonder, I'd like to someday, I hope it, someone writes an article or, or something about how that all came together, how they were able to, what the business deal was that put all this together to, to enable people to uh, produce licensed hammer merchandise. So that's interesting. Uh, maybe, maybe only to me. Okay. Um, but, you know, so I have some criticisms, but more about, more, not really the figure. I think the figure is very nice. I, I, I don't need a better Mego Frankenstein figure, Curse of Frankenstein. I think, I think we've got it. That's, that's it. It's fine just the way it is. Uh, I like the Dracula a little more. Um, but, but this, this is fine. I, 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 I'm not saying it's fantastic, it's stupendous, it's wonderful, but it's perfectly fine. Uh, like I said, I'm not wishing for a better one. It's, it, this one satisfies me as far as Migo Curse of Frankenstein figure is concerned. I'm satisfied. My gripes are more the packaging and that universal style black and white look instead of a colorful hammer style packaging. The, the illustration on the front and the photo on the back, it's all black and white and it's got this universal oriented uh, like, like 1930s, 40s universal films instead of 50s, 60s Hammer films. So I don't like some of the choices with the card art. And uh, and if indeed they still have that problem with the die, oh gosh, they, they've just got to fix that. I mean, that's ridiculous if the die is still bleeding onto the plastic. I don't know if that's what's going on there, but I know in other recent Mego figures that has still been a problem. So that is something that has to get fixed. Yeah, I mean that's just one of the minimum things you should expect from a toy is that the dye doesn't bleed and stain the toy. <clears throat> but all that said, I'm glad that we have these licensed Hammer Frankenstein, Dracula, these these Hammer figures. 
I'm glad we have these things finally, and it's exciting to see them. Um, I'm glad, glad to own them, glad to buy them, and I'll keep buying whatever hammer figures Amigo wants to make. Uh, I think I am, I, I am cutting back on Amigo purchases and just new toy purchases in general. I'm not buying all the new monsters. Like I'm not buying the killer clowns or whatever. I'm I'm not buying all the new stuff. But I'll I'll keep buying the Hammer characters, and uh, and the Universal characters. I'll keep buying those. Uh, but I am becoming more choosy about which ones I buy, and which ones I don't. I'm not going to collect them all. I'm only going to buy characters that that mean something to me, that that matter to me personally, and uh, certainly Hammer and Universal meet that criteria. Okay, that's it. <clears throat> Time to go. I hope you enjoyed this. Stretched it out a bit. <laughs> Talking about basically one toy, but threw in some extra things there. Um, I hope you are either having a great Christmas or did have a great Christmas, depending on when you're watching this. And I hope you have a wonderful new year. And I will see you. I don't know if I'll see you before the new year, but I'll definitely see you in the new year. So thank you for watching. And Basement of Horror will return.